If you've never wondered where flies go in the winter time, don't worry. You'll be wondering all right by the time she's through. What she's handling is a sort of test bench made of wet cotton wool and crystalline sugar. It's packed tight with the eggs of the common house fly. The bath's not for cleanliness. It's a rough check on numbers. 500 eggs go to a tenth of a milliliter. A thousand of them will be sown just like seeds, half an inch deep in this compost. Like the recipe, it's bran mixed with desiccated yeast, dried mold, grass meal and soya, guaranteed to turn out nice and light if it's well aerated. Incidentally, this is D-9 in the life of a fly. By D-Day, the eggs will have hatched. Subtitle for this scene should be Nine Days Later, for D-Day has already arrived for the eggs in this jar. But don't get the wrong idea, he's not giving them more elbow room. What he's emptying them into is a sieve, which will screen the cocoons and pupae from the compost. Who does the blowing when there's no human around is a secret the grubs keep to themselves. Now they're heading for the last roundup, the jar in which they will change into flies. A hundred such test groups are kept under constant inspection at these modern research laboratories at Sunbury on Thames. What's the point of it all? Well, this next experiment will show you, for D plus five in the life of these flies means death. The glass house they've entered is a test room for insecticides. In 10 minutes, they'll all be down for the count. A milliliter of fly killer, that's what the pipette holds. Now it's injected through the small porthole into the test room. Nothing much to do now but to relax and wait. Science takes to that watch sitting down. Curious the sort of job some people have, isn't it? But on such reports, science depends in its fight against disease.